So uh, I think I'm holding you from lunch, so I'll try to keep within my time, uh, time here. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, having us. Uh, my name's Gary Pack. I'm with uh, Intel. I'm our uh, North America HPC Marketing Manager. And um, I'm going to talk about squigglies. No. I'm going to go over our uh, Intel machine learning strategy today with you. And I thought we'd first start with a, a taxonomy, if you will. And we'll fix this uh, once we get, so once it's posted, it'll have all of these uh, font issues fixed. But I thought it'd be good just to cover a taxonomy when we speak about AI or data analytics, um, perceptual understanding, uh, machine learning and deep learning. Um, we actually have a taxonomy that we cover where you can see AI is kind of in one section, data analytics is another. Uh, deep learning for us is a subset of machine learning, as you can see. Um, and then within deep learning, we have training and scoring. So we have a, a set of different taxonomy that we try to keep internally, and we wanted to share that with you so that you could understand how we view uh, AI versus data analytics versus machine learning versus deep learning. So in terms of uh, machine learning, um, you can see that we've had a number of great presentations this morning. And the way that the, the machine learning process works here is that through data acquisition and um, data aggregation, you can see that really, as in the previous presentation, um, the data scientists are working probably a lot of the time on the data aggregation, data curation, and then also labeling the data. And I believe that that's where the data scientists are taking quite a bit of their time and efforts in machine learning. And then developing the models and training for accuracy. And you can see that going out into the model scoring as was shown previously. And we had to ask ourselves, why now? Why is this important for everyone today? Why is it such a big issue? Or why is it, is it fundamentally changing the conversation? And there's three things, uh, bigger data, so previously, numbers were five kilobytes uh, per record. Um, you can see that video is driving quite a bit. Uh, high resolution video at 50 million kilobytes uh, per object. And with the introduction of 4K, that's even going to grow exponentially. Uh, better hardware. Uh, our transistor densities and computation is doubling about 18, every 18 months or so. And then the cost per gigabyte uh, in 1995 was about $1,000. And you look at last year, three cents per gigabyte. So you can see the exponential cost of storage as well is driving uh, much better hardware pricing as well as uh, driving better uh, overall performance for customers. And then smarter algorithms. I think uh, I was talking with a member and I believe um, at supercomputing this year, there's gonna be at least 10 startups in introducing their algorithms around uh, big data and data analytics. So really, there is quite a bit of uh, theoretical advances in training, uh, new mathematical techniques that keep developing. Uh, it's a wonderful time, because this convergence of better, bigger data, better hardware, and then smarter algorithms really is a great development effort through the whole, whole industry. These are just some examples of applications that we see. Um, I believe the, one of the, a few of the presentations did uh, talk, touch on some of these, but things like ImageNet with object localization and image classification using CNN or con uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, Netflix, which is great for, you know, their recommendation engines. Um, it's a little bit challenging for me because my friend watches Netflix, I watch Netflix, and I can never see the videos or the movies that he's seeing. But uh, obviously there is an algorithm there with Netflix. Um, other, other items are click-through rates, uh, decision-making. So a number of these model types you can see on the right are parallel uh, programming. And they're available for these applications in machine learning. Now you may ask, why Intel? Why are we interested? And one of the things from a visionary standpoint that Intel has, if it computes, it's best with Intel. And you can see from a machine learning on the data center side on our training, all the way on the uh, inference side with wearables and IoT, um, we have the uh, roadmap as well as the products to support the needs in machine learning um, from data collection, data creation on the wearable side. And just to do a quick plug, if you haven't seen Makers on uh, TBS, 
uh, take an opportunity to watch it. It's actually quite fun. So you have individuals, you have teams of uh, people using wearables, creating data based on whether it's usage, whether it's um, you know, uh, uh, different types of uh, techniques, whether it's health related, whether it's for your dog, et cetera. Um, creating data with Curie and then able to actually utilize client side to take that data and analyze and then store in the data center with other models uh, for machine learning. So really, if it computes, it, it works best with Intel. Um, from an end-to-end -end perspective, really, uh, we can deliver a quite thorough roadmap. So what's our machine learning strategy? On the top, you can see that within solutions, we want to support the industry, uh, industrial in innovation through verticals, um, such as ADAS, or uh, autom autonomous driving, uh, health and life sciences within the energy and retail sector. Um, it is public knowledge that Levi's, for example, we're supporting them on IoT, as well as in their retail space on uh, some of the machine learning aspects to ensure that in the retail space, um, there is some level of uh, uh, machine learning where customers are anticipated and the retail experience is actually heightened for customers. So the pants that may not fit that well, they're able to, in the retail space, understand which pants would fit better for you, as well as the stocking inventory. We also are accelerating adoption by providing tools to the ecosystem with our trusted analytics platform, or TAP, and then open source uh, work with our ISVs, system integrators, and also academic developer outreach. And we're enabling and optimizing key industry frameworks. So Spark, um, as our as our friends at IBM mentioned, um, Cafe Theano, and a, a number of different um, key industry frameworks you can see there. And we want to extract the maximum performance through our libraries, such as Math Kernel Library or MKL, and then also DAL, or Data Analytics, Data Analytics Acceleration Libraries. Um, all of these are really uh, catered towards machine learning. Whether it's single node or a cluster, we have the compute, networking, and storage that can support that, whether it's Xeon Phi, Xeon, FPGAs, our storage and SSDs, upcoming 3D crosspoint, as well as our Omnipath, Omnipath architecture. Really, we are um, having scalable uh, solutions that are developed for machine learning, as I said, whether it's single cluster or a multiple cluster. So let me just summarize. Um, I just want to mention to you that it should say Intel's investments in HPC. On the compute side, you can see that we have our Xeon, Xeon 5 processors, um, codenamed Knight's Corner. We're very excited about that. Our launched, recently launched Omnipath Fabric, our solutions for Lustre, upcoming 3D Crosspoint, and then Parallel Studio and Cluster Studio. So software tools to engage you and to help you. We also have our high performance data analytics, HPDA, um, and then HPC optimized uh, cloud solutions as well. And then finally, if you haven't heard, our Intel scalable system framework is really designed to help you from a single node to an entire cluster, um, whether it's compute, whether it's storage, our SSF should be able to help you. In fact, we have numerous partnerships with a variety of different OEM partners, and we're actually rolling that out uh, as we speak. And then on the um, outreach perspective, we have our uh, modernizing computing code with our IPCCs, uh, also known as our Intel Parallel Computing Centers, and these are academia, academia uh, labs, and leading institutions really to help uh, with parallelizing code and modernizing code today. And that's actually all I have today. I don't want to keep you for lunch, but are there any questions? And I do apologize for the font. We'll get that fixed. Yeah, here it is. It was working. It was working in the morning. I know. I don't know what happened. So feel free to reach out to me privately if you'd like. Um, I am here for the uh, entire duration of the HPC user forum, and I'd like to meet up with you. So thank you for your time. Great.